Uh, not going to do much today. It is like uh, Africa hot out there. It's almost to the point where it's unbearable. The cicadas are flying around. And they're just, like flying into everything. They don't even know what the hell they're doing except getting into people's way. And Anyways, I thought, well, I'll come out here and um, open up these, uh, these side valve covers here. Take a peek inside and see what it looks like. I've looked into engines before that were just caked with sludge and funk and uh, and that's kind of an indicator of you know what the pan's gonna look like and, uh, and and all the other places inside the motor however since we took the head off and you know you can still see some of the seat uh, for the valves which shiny looks great um, you can still see honing marks in the cylinders so I'm hoping that when we pull these off that it's not too bad in there so anyways yeah it's kind of like a, an l134 willis motor right um cut it off right about there and uh remove those two cylinders and the freaking block i mean it's there's so much so many similarities uh between the two engines um so we're gonna look in here and see what it looks like and see how closely it matches you know valve springs lifters adjusters the whole nine yards let's check it out because i'm curious here we are i'm going to use my snap-on b1351 i don't know if it's going to focus it's really just a wrench for the eccentrics on the uh on the willis brake system that little quarter inch end right there that's enough to get in there and, and help that out. I don't want to bite that with a pair of pliers and, and mar them up, so. But, well, that didn't take much. Okay. That one's got some little stiffness to it. There's a rubber gasket or something there. All right, well, easy enough, right? Oh my goodness. Okay, that looks good. That looks really good. Look at them freaking lifters, man. Not one speck of rust on or anything. This motor had to have been overhauled at one point in time in its life. How would I know that, fellas? Have there been some markings on it somewhere? Okay, those came out nice and clean. Oh, very nice. Now here's something I've never seen before. Before I do anything, let me, uh, let me move the camera in here and give you a nice close-up view. Pretty clean environment. Man, the last motor I tore into like this, there was so much crap kicked up in there. It was like digging out clay. And uh, an interesting shield here. I'll snap that back into place, but that's where the oil return is. Spring loaded. Interesting. I'm sure it serves a purpose. Yeah, I'm pretty pumped about this motor. So I'm going to tell you, um, I've, I've gotten into the side of a, a handful of motors, and that's the cleanest I've ever seen, okay? Um... Normally, it is just completely piled up and caked with funk in here because 
you know, some joker left just left that motor go and, and had bad oil in it and ran it forever and never cleaned it or whatever. I mean, this is beautiful and I'm stoked. You know, I paid $5,000 for this truck when I bought it. It ran great. Um, I had the wrong carburetor on it. And so I got the correct carburetor for it. Um, it was an old rebuild, been sitting on a guy's shelf. I put it on there and the, the thing fired right up. And then, um, you know, we had the truck on stands First of all, I was able to drive it around the property without a problem, and uh, but once I got it in here and and sitting on its axles, I put it in gear, and uh, the thing is just man, it was going through the gears no problem. Drive line was nice and quiet, and uh, I was like, man, what a blessing! Because normally when you when you take a stab in the dark like that on an old vehicle like this, you just don't know what you're going to get. So Firestone used to own this truck, all right. About nine years ago, nine or ten years ago, is when the guy that I got it from bought it. And he kept it indoors, undercover, for like eight years. He bought it at an auction. The title, uh, and it had been titled through Firestone in, out here in Lemoyne in Pennsylvania since the mid-80s. So I don't know, and I know there was a Firestone place there at one time that sold surplus stuff. Some of you guys that have been around to know that, maybe you can chime in and let me know some history about it. Or they used the truck and uh, used it as a plow truck because it did have a plow configuration on the front that was all Bubba modified and stuff that I removed. But maybe maybe because of that, they maintained the truck and, and, and kept it in good shape. So, I mean, we're definitely going to replace all the brake system in here and... Uh, and, and just do some cleaning on this motor, but my gosh, that this that looks so good. Uh, I'm very encouraged to see how clean that these lifters are. Um, you know, the, the last several motors I've worked on, they were all pitted and funky, and uh, but this looks really good. And so we're probably going to pull the uh, the um, freeze plugs out. There's five of them on this block. And uh, just time to take a peek in there, put some fresh freeze plugs in. Um, you know, there might be some funk on that side of the block. There might not be. We'll see. And, uh, and we'll take care of it. I am not taking off the oil pump. It's staying because it ain't leaking and it works. We are going to drop the pan. And it's pretty hollow, so hopefully it's clean. Matter of fact, uh, maybe we should do that right now. See what happens. Yeah. What do you think? Let's get her done. Whoa, this stuff ain't looking too shabby. However, I can't rotate the engine right now. Let me show you why. I want to flip it upside down. I got to make an adjustment to the third arm or the fourth arm. I only have three holding this block up, and if I flip it, it's going to break it. So uh, we're going to get the uh, the engine on the hoist. That little guy right up there. And uh, I'm going to make some modifications to this uh, engine stand. Get it remounted and get this thing flipped upside down. 
All right, I think that's it for today. Um, oil pan, oh my gosh, dude, you saw the inside of it, it looks pretty good. I'm gonna uh, dump the oil out of it and see um, if there's any sludge at the bottom. Other than that, well here, should we film that part? Let's film that part. There's some sludge in there. <laughs> well, that's not what I wanted to do. Anyhow. That's very, that's minor. Nice thing is I don't see any metal shavings. Humma humma humma. Very cool. Check this out. That is a keeper for a valve spring and valve. So someone's been in this motor, obviously. Or I've got one that's missing one. I'm glad I've seen that. No other pieces. All right. Amazing what you find, right? Okay, a little bit of sludge, not bad at all. No metal shavings. But there was one half of a keeper in there. Now, that sucks, man. So did they do a valve job? Drop one of these bad boys in there and just look the other way? It's a good thing this thing gets sucked up into something. It's heavy enough that it probably just stayed at the bottom of the pan. But I don't have a choice now. I'm going to have to inspect every one of these valves to see which one is missing. Or if it's just an extra one left over from, a, from an old valve train job. All right, that's it. <clears throat> you guys take it easy. And, uh, yeah, glad we got that off so we could take a peek at it. I'm sure you've discovered some funky stuff before. Oh, and the hat. War damn eagle. Yeah, Auburn Tigers. <laughs>